Hello, and welcome back to my uh, five-year plan playthrough of RP1. Joining me is Maximal. Hey, guys. Hey. So uh, I've installed our heat shields, so I can actually now build the... Um, the little re-entry thing. Basic avionics, do we have a sample container? Yes. All right, so I guess we can just tool a science core. There's a little half meter sphere. Heck. That's bugged. Should not be able to put more electricity than will actually fit. Um those changes I don't have the screen on uh, in the editor for your avionics the uh, the proc avionics window you can put more electricity than will actually fit volume wise oh I thought you, you had to require them to do the uh, size adjustment to get it to fit um, yeah but it still shouldn't let you just do put in a number you like and hit apply yeah, it should force you to resize at that point. Or just clamp the number. Choose don't don't resize. Okay, so So you actually got the number into the avionics and not just in the UI panel? Yep. Yeah, I right. I went into the tank UI and it's like, yeah, you, you have all this electricity and you're at negative. Okay, I'll write that up so there you go. Okay, so we need to run this stuff for a day. Turn that on. The camera only runs for like five minutes, so that doesn't matter for... All right, and that's three days of electricity, so that's fine. Oh, and we get service module 2. That's nice. Makes us much lighter. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. a heat shield. Adjustable heat shield. Okay. And its tech is... Mercury class.
parachute on. Put a little baby parachute on. That's fine. All these things are fine. Um, I wonder what the sample mass of that is. Two kilograms. All right, so that doesn't, that doesn't actually affect things meaningfully. Real question is, should I bring two cameras? Probably should bring two cameras. Let's use 0.04. Check the lift capability. Those changes are all in now, by the way. All right, let's see how aerodynamically stable this is. The answer is probably not. Uh, hypersonic. All right, Mach 12. All right, so if it's spin stabilized, it's not that awful. It also just... Um... It is actually yeah. stable at zero AOA. That's good. Can adjust your avionics COM. Or, or oh yeah, coupler. I never ever remember that. You can do well, that. That's what I'm here to remind you of random features. Z offset. That doesn't seem to have made any difference whatsoever. Hmm. It should, having your Z offset higher. Uh, don't you mean Y? Well, I don't know what the axis is. You can turn on your COM sensor to make sure you're moving the one you wanted to, but yes, I want you to move it up toward the shield. Uh, I can show COM. Oh, I oh yeah, yeah, just the stock one. Yeah. If you're not working with very much mass, you should be able to visualize that right now. Yeah. Okay. That that helped a little bit. That f that feels kind of weird though. I mean, sure. More realistically, just adjusting the, the size of your decoupler would help. What, like making the decoupler even smaller? Yeah. Yeah, probably help a little. All right. 
your uh, your science car is going to be a little bit heavier than it currently thinks it is. By two kilograms. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to be good enough. Okay. Now, other decoupler. Given that payload mass is not really a requirement here, um, I'm going to put my retros after all of this. All right, so two cameras. <laughs> will give us two full sets of thing. R one of it's around here somewhere. There it is. That's not enough delta V the orbit. Slight kink. All right, 150 is going to be fine. Uh, squirrel, I yeah, I put it off because um, I was already in the midst of doing the comsat stuff and. I didn't actually unlock the... Basically, because my launch vehicle is powerful enough, early enough, like, I just threw stages at the problem of geostationary. And, like, I could have done this way somewhat earlier, because, like, those nodes unlocked probably six months ago at this point. Um, maybe less than that. But maybe more like three months. Um, it's just based on the node order. Remember that I'm, that I'm under teched for where you'd expect me to be at this point. Uh, but also just like I was trying to finish targeted satellites. Hey, Rip Ripper. Alright, so this all looks reasonably sane. There is, however, one problem. With all of this. What's that? That problem is, uh, I need to calculate. So I need to perform retrofire at such an angle that I will enter correctly. Because if I perform okay. retrofire, 
150 meters per second of pressure fire. I'll still enter probably a. You'll be like fifth or a sixth of an orbit. Yeah. Later. Yep. So. Yeah, I'll be quite a bunch of degrees off. Uh, Squirrel, that's... So, the reason... The reason why we have the name Molnia is precisely because geostationary satellites were of basically no use to the Soviet Union, which is why they didn't bother to actually send any up. Um, they were launching, like, broadly the equivalent of what we would do with a, with a geostationary satellite, they were launching as Molnia satellites. Like, we have Molnia because that was the name of the class of satellite that was launched into that orbit, which was effectively a, a way to get a long loiter time comsat for high latitudes. Could add some extra RD one hundred and three is and then accept that you'll have some radial velocity when you fire them to hit the right. Yeah, that's. I think that's my best call because I don't have. I don't really have a better option than that. Uh, squirrel. Yes, the point. So we didn't name. Okay, so let's quick quick discursion on on the name of on Soviet naming for launch vehicles. Uh, often their launch vehicles were named after the most the like Soviet launch vehicles just had letters and numbers as their designations, and they were usually popularly known after the most common or most famous set of um, of payloads that they launched. That's why. Uh, the the carrier rocket known as Soyuz is known as Soyuz because it mostly launched the Soyuz. Um, why Molnia, the Molnia variant of the R7 is no, known as Molnia because it mostly launched Molnias. Um, Proton is known as Proton because it mostly, mostly launched Protons. Um, its actual designation is like 8K something or other and Chilome called it UR500. So, Molnia is just basically the, the Soviet military's name for a CompSat. And the, the first of that long-running series were launched into the orbit that also took the name from the satellite that was... that, that used it. Uh, Rip Ripper, just send what? And send where? Yeah, that's that's not how RP1 works. <laughs> uh, this is not Kerbal Space Program. This is RP1. I don't think that's going to fit. No, that's actually not going to fit in the bearing. That's not good. All right, so let's come up with a slightly different strategy. 
which is... Ah, how much Delta V do we have? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, Squirrel, so by then the Molnia rocket didn't exist anymore, I would expect. Um, Molnia as a, as a launch vehicle stopped being commonly used by like, the mid-60s. And I would expect that the satellite you're talking about wasn't launched until later, given that Proton didn't come online until later. And for them to have, like based on their electronics industry, they would probably need a Proton to for the, the satellite to be of much use. Ah, uh, I'm going to run out of fairing space. You definitely will. That sucks. I mean, I guess I could just tool taller fairings. It's stickier, stick to our RD-103 is underfueled to like kind of the sides offset. But I think you'll still need a taller fairing if you want two cameras. Yeah. Well, for the sake of argument, let's see how that works. No, it'll just fit. Think. Real close, uh, but it'll like it. What? Oh, I think it'll be clipping, uh, at least on the interior, not going outside. Oh yeah, probably the thickness is kind of bonkers for those things. Oh, I didn't unlock the fairing upgrade. I need to do that. That'll help. Um, there, that's better. Yeah, now we're fine. Only problem is that, yeah, now we're back to having to carry a lot of these things, which they're quite reliable. Yeah, 100% current reliability, 99.9. .9. All right, yeah, so who cares? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was also thinking you could just... Uh attach them such in a way that you decouple the cameras and then have them fire by they're out to the sides right right i mean we could just have them hanging off in space <laughs> but that feels real cheesy i mean tilt them enough so that they're kind of at the bottom of your heat shield right but fair i mean sticking on six doesn't matter So just use set motors on the last stage. It's fine. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. I think I will need six. Yeah, because you'll be firing you know, like I guess forty-five degrees off. No, the fact that I'm doing two sixty-eight means that I can be pretty close. 
that's going to be a pretty steep descent. I mean, we'll we'll sim it. We'll see. But my guess is that I don't need to fire it much off at all. Squirrel, huh? I did. That's interesting. I didn't think Molly M was still flying, but I. Oh no, no, no! You're right. Yes, Molly M. Yes, Molly M was still flying then. Yes, and it's basically it's just it's the name for Soyuz with the extra stage. <laughs> Man. Yeah, you got me good. Alright. That all looks reasonable. Let us simul simulate it in orbit. Uh, at... Call it... 200 kilometers... Inclination twenty eight point eight. Oh, do we not have comms? No, we, of course we don't have comms. You know, I kind of want to see what, what it's like in the daylight. So, let's orient retrograde, spin up, and see what happens. Or, you know what, let's... Uh, heading is 259.4. Pitch. Let's try 30 degrees of down pitch. Except, isn't that backward? You want? Yes, that's backwards. And that's why I thought you needed a little more time because, uh, yeah, this is all going to kick you up a little bit. Yeah, it'll then. give it'll. Yeah, it'll give me radio up. But yeah, with that much thrust, I think thirty degrees is plenty. I'm gonna do ten. Not great. I guess the decoupler thought it was clipped somehow. Well, that's interesting. It looks like 10 degrees was approximately correct. Except for the whole, like being off axis that way part, which I didn't really expect. 
Hopefully your probe is stable enough. Yeah. Could also make a blister shaped science core, which would be useful for other reactors. Yeah, it's just um, I figured I would be using this for other probes. I, I like I thought about that originally. But, okay, yeah, we're actually we're we're stable enough that we're we're aligning fine. Cool. Although for some reason the reentry shader doesn't think that. That this is yeah, in that front. That's weird. Nerve wracking for. And the fact that we have such a low ballistic coefficient is kind of amazing. That decoupling went just as planned. Yeah, I mean, honestly, don't care. <laughs> of course. But yeah, the ballistic coefficient, like the ballistic coefficient of the heat shield was about what I expected it to be. You have to enable crossfeed to move a sample. It's been a while since I've done that. Uh, I think I Kerbalism patched that. Okay. I, I Harmony patched that in Kerbalism, I think. So hard no longer defaults to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm playing on moderate anyway, so. All right, yeah, so that's fine. So now we just have to figure out why we had that weird, weird kick. Because the rest of this worked just fine. That's visually below it, so that's fine. It wasn't, it wasn't the kick from releasing that that did it though. It was the kick from releasing the lower stage. That's what I just did. No, no, was releasing the stage with the cameras. Yeah, that's the decoupler that I was touching. Sorry, releasing the stage with the cameras from the the booster below it. No, that wasn't the thing that gave it the kick. Thought it was. I think so. Okay. I mean, I'll offset that a little bit too, but pretty sure it was like we were we were locked on. We spun up, fired the. Um. Solids, and then when I decoupled, this this started oscillating. Um, Check the VOD later. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll see who's correct. Yeah, no worries. Um, Either way, it should fix it. 
Okay, so cool. This is this is all ready to go. Yeah, see, I have a ludicrous quantity of unlock credit. Yep, that's nuts. I think maybe it should go down to 0.3. Yeah. Uh, and Squirrel, yeah, I did have the, the, the COM offset a little bit. Alright, so we're doing our... Um, test launch and that uh, and budget is fine. And we're going to roll that out, and that will again decrease funds even more. Okay, and the requirements of this are 50 degrees, Try that. Oh, son of a gun. What's wrong? I I screwed up. I forgot to set PVG correctly for that. I forgot to set which stage to optimize and other stuff. Also, I think I forgot to fix staging on on Yep, I also forgot this. I rip ripper's desire that you just send it doesn't end up working with something as complicated as RP1. Yeah. Yeah, it would be really nice if MechJeb would automatically op like def default to last stage and optimize stage on the last stage needed to 
reach orbit unless it's a solid stage and then it just walk backwards on which stage to optimize. Like that's that's a reasonable default to set. Let's try this again. Oh, I also had a typo there, too. I didn't notice. All right, that looks better. That, okay, now it's now it's figured itself out. Uh, about forty-two. Oh,
Are you keeping a physical time warp during these launches uh, unstable? No. No, the issue with with fizz warp is more around what it does to test flight math. I mean, also like aerodynamics and MechJep, given that MechJep's um, PVG update rate is a little funky, if memory serves. So I don't like to do it super low, but by the time we're up here, yeah, there's, there's no need not to fizz warp. But it does... My memory of the test flight math is that it's not 100% consistent between regular and might be. I think I might have done a thing where it just it just runs the calculation that many times, many times. But oh, odd. You think it'd have to depend on the time step anyway? But okay. Uh, no, the thing is. Um, Just multiplying the time step into the failure calx isn't quite the same as running the failure calx four times, right? I mean, like, I get. It's, I mean, you apply the. Uh, you can apply it as power and run it once. Yes, you could apply it as a power and run it once, and also if the if the numbers should be very very small, so the the epsilon there is tiny. I guess maybe it would matter for like a, a solid with that's only running for a second or something like that. That's its MTPF is very low. I'm not trying to rush you, but also your your one hour streaming warning oh. is coming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, I'll just finish this mission. Maybe do the other one too. Shouldn't take the other one. Shouldn't take very long because it's just go up warp for a day and then go back. Let's see. Interesting to see that Scott has gone full betrayal and is now playing Juno. Yeah, there's something. Ex it definitely thinks something's clipped. Yeah. All right, flight planner. Do a thing. In. Only showing me the ones fifteen hours away. That's super weird. Well, that definitely meets the requirement. It just has to be above like 800 kilometers. 3,000 kilometers is definitely above 800 kilometers. Doesn't we don't have an eccentricity requirement, so it doesn't actually matter. So this is not the three comps, four comps. No, I did that last time. Okay, right, right. This is the this you is, just left a bunch yeah. of extra on. Yeah, exactly. Right, looks funny. Yeah, because it was faster than editing the vessel.
So buy one satellite, get three free. Basically. All right. Yeah. So. This is fine. Okay. Good enough. Hey, look, we're finally funds positive. That's nice. And we're nearly max rep. Oh. Uh, Robbie, I'm sorry I didn't see your question. If you're still here, um, that's, that's PVG. It's really only useful if you're playing Versus realism overhaul, RP1, etc. Um, okay, so. I guess I can afford to speed this up just a tiny bit. We'll put that ahead just a little bit. All right, now we're back in the money. And we can fire, finally start hiring more researchers. Okay. Um,
Oh, son of a gun. Um, I forgot. That I was supposed to complete the program. Oh, shoot. So, let me just load that. There's that. We got our rep. We got our confidence. In. So let's go ahead and delete this. Gives us a bunch of rep. Now we can take this. this requires. You need to launch four geostationary compsats. With 315 compsat on each. So we're definitely not going to be combining birds. Well, we actually might be able to No. No, we were already we were already basically not able to um to do what we need to do. Yeah, though if you had a restartable motor that would be more reasonable. Yeah, but I'm not going to for a bit. Also, do it if you did unguided kick, but uh, again, not easy with Soviet playthroughs. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm just going to take the thing that I'm going to have to do anyway, rather than take this and spend. Um, Because this kid, this is three years. I mean, four launches at forty-five days each is not a lot. It's half a year. Um, but I'll take the lunar thing because. Yeah, I'll take the lunar thing and not actually build any any vehicles for it for a bit, because I'm going to be building uh, my interplanetary stuff pretty soon, mm -hmm. and also I my human space flight stuff. Funding curve. Sorry. But I should fix that weird kink in the funding curve. Oh, this. Yeah, that's a that's a weird kink. Yeah, I assume that the the tangent for this point is wrong. Yep. It's yeah, probably supposed to be like that. Anyway, yeah. Okay, let's just well I'm gonna save the game first. Um Do you have a visual tangent set for I know you there's one tool out there. Uh I was just doing it. Yeah, no, you absolutely should install Unity and then grab Ramon's Curve Editor. It makes life so much easier.
I assume it'll still work on current Unity, but you can also just install 5.4 or whatever. All right, let's just bite the bullet. I'd like to do it on fast. There's no way that I'm going to want to spend time grinding stuff to do it on fast. Hmm. You also got rid of the program that you would have been able to grind on. Yes. All right. So that just increased our funding. Now, yes, we are now daily positive. Going to duplicate that just in case we have a failure, although I don't think that's likely. And, oh yeah, I need to accept the contract. Okay, that's rolling out. R&D is now done. So now I'll go ahead and hire some searchers. Which made that decrease in time just a little bit, although not very much. The main point, though, is it's going to make these come faster. So let's try this. You know what? I'm dumb. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here <laughs> instead of flying this tonight. I really need to not do all this online. Sounds good. Smart decision. Yeah. All right. I will see you again soon. Sounds good. Thanks for, good. Thanks for coming by. Catch you next time. Thank you everyone for watching. I will catch you next time as well. Bye.